time is where we read our last two chapters together. Now remember, tomorrow night's our family night, okay? So, so make sure you're allowed to come to that. But so we'll read our last two chapters, and then we uh, we have our little finale movie that we'll watch as well. It's not like a, a movie, but a uh, pictures of, of all our events throughout this, this last month, okay? So that's how that'll work. Now, we have two very special guests that will be reading our last chapters, okay? So, our first guest, if you can believe it, is actually the mayor of Rochester. I can't believe he's here. So, please welcome, a big riddle welcome, to Mr. Mayor of They've overstretched him, 
on the gun, gun stretching machine, said Mr. Wonka. How very careless, but how dreadful for him, cried Charlie. Nonsense, Mr. Wonka. He's very lucky. Every basketball team in the country will be trying to get him. But now, he added, it is time to left these four silly children. I have something very important to talk to you about, dear Charlie. Mr. Wonka pressed another button and the elevator swung upwards into the sky. Thank you for helping me out. I'm going to let this dance. <laughs> Exactly, said Mr. Wonka. 
I decided to invite five children to the factory, and the one I liked best at the end of the day would be the winner. But Mr. Wonka, Stanford Grandpa Joe, do you really and truly mean that you are giving the whole of this enormous factory to little Charlie? After all, there's no time for arguments, cried Mr. Wonka. We must go at once and fetch the rest of the family, Charlie's father and his mother and anyone else that's around. They can all live in the factory from now on. They can all help to run it until Charlie is old enough to do it by himself. Where do you live, Charlie? Charlie peered down through the glass elevator at the snow-covered houses that lay below. It's over there, he said, pointing. It's that little cottage right on the edge of the town, the tiny little one. I see it, cried Mr. Wonka, and he pressed some more buttons, and the elevator shot down towards Charlie's house. I'm afraid my mother won't come with us, Charlie said sadly. Why ever not? Because she won't leave Grandma Josephine and Grandpa, Grandma Josephine and Grandma Georgina and Grandpa George. But they must come too. They can't, Charlie said. They're very old and they haven't been out of bed for 20 years. Then we'll take the bed along as well. With the minutes, said Mr. Wonka, there's plenty of room in this elevator for a bed. You couldn't get the bed out of the house, said Grandpa Joe. It won't go through the door. You mustn't despair, cried Mr. Wonka. Nothing is impossible. You watch. The elevator was now hovering over the roof of the Bucket's little house. What are you going to do, cried Charlie. I'm going right on in to fetch them, said Mr. Wonka. How? asked Grandpa Joe. Through the roof, said Mr. Wonka, pressing another button. No, shouted Charlie. Stop, shouted Grandpa Joe. Crash went the elevator, right down through the roof of the house into the old people's bedroom. Showers of dust and broken tiles and bits of wood and cockroaches and spiders and bricks and cement went raining down onto the three old ones who were lying in bed. And each of them thought that the world, end of the world was come. Grandma Georgina fainted. Grandma Josephine dropped her false teeth. Grandpa George put his head under the blanket and Mr. and Mrs. Bucket came rushing in from the next room. Save us, cried Grandma Josephine. Calm yourself, my darling wife, said Grandpa Joe, stepping out of the elevator. It's only us. Mother, cried Charlie, rushing into Mrs. Bucket's arms. Mother, mother, listen to what's happened. We're all going back to live in Mr. Wonka's factory, and we're going to help him to run it, and he's given it all to me. And, 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 what are you talking about, said Mrs. Bucket. Just look at our house, cried poor Mr. Bucket. It's in ruins. My dear sir, said Mr. Wonka, jumping forward and shaking Mr. Bucket warmly by the hand, I'm so very glad to meet you. You mustn't worry about your house. From now on, you're never going to need it again anyway. Who is this crazy man, screamed Grandma Josephine. He could have killed us all. This, said Grandma Joe, is Mr. Willy Wonka himself. It took quite a time for Grandpa Joe and Charlie to explain to explain to everyone exactly what had been happening to them all day. And even then, they all refused to write back to the factory in the elevator. I'd rather die in my bed, shouted Grandma Josephine. So would I, cried Grandma Georgina. I refuse to go, announced Grandpa George. So Mr. Wonka and Grandpa Joe and Charlie, taking no notice of their screams, simply pushed the bed into the elevator. They pushed Mr. and Mrs. Bucket in after it. Then they got in themselves. Mr. Wonka pressed a button. The doors closed. Grandma Georgina screamed, and the elevator rose up off the floor and shot through the hole in the roof out into the open sky. Charlie climbed onto the bed and tried to calm the three old people, 
who were still petrified with fear. Please don't be frightened, he said. It's quite safe, and we're going to the most wonderful place in the world. Charlie's right, said Grandpa Joe. Where will there be anything to eat when we get there? Asked Grandma Josephine. I'm starving. The whole family is starving. Anything to eat? Cried Charlie, laughing. Oh, you just wait and see.
She's a pillar of Riddle. She is one that has grown our school tremendously, and I cannot be thankful enough for her and actually helping me grow as a principal. So thank you, Mrs. Zion. And let's give her a big round of applause.